All right, kiddos. I am looking at the last two pages in your workbook for this week, and I tore both of them out. So I tore out 157 and the one that begins with 159. I am not going to go through all four sides. I'm only going to do three sides with you right now. And the fourth side, I'll, I'll just let you know I'm not requiring. If you want to go ahead and take a look at it, go for it. But we're just going to do three sides to kind of finish up the week. So um, we need to talk about commas again. And we need to make sure we know the two ways that we're practicing commas this week because you will need to practice this or do this and show this on your test tomorrow. So um, picking the correct use of punctuation, in this case commas, in these, these sentences. So number one, magnets help make electricity and they hold papers on a refrigerator is the text or the words. And the difference between these two is that in the first one, a comma was put there before the word and. Now, if that is correct, then this would be able to stand alone. Magnets help make electricity, and then they hold papers on a refrigerator. Both could be separate individual sentences. They were put together with a comma, aft, and then and following it. So that would be a compound sentence. That would be correct. You would need that comma there. And note the comma comes first, and then the joining word and. Number two, this winter we are going skiing in Vail, Colorado. I see the difference here, no comma or a comma between city and state. And we definitely have learned already this week that we need that comma between the city and state. So we should have chosen letter B there. Um, number three, the last time it rained that much was April 10th, 2006. Now each sentence here has a comma. This one puts a comma after the word was. This one puts it after the 10 before 2006. There is absolutely no reason to put a comma after was there. The last time it rained that much was, and then to pause, there's no need for a pause there, and there's no reason to have a comma there. So we need to go with letter B, which is separating the date from the year with a comma. And that is something we should be doing when we write. So letter B. Number four, Jack wrote about electricity for his science report, and he did research on lightning. Oh, comma here, comma here. This one has a comma before the end. This one goes and and then the comma. So what have we learned about compound sentences and where to place that comma? We learned to put it where the period would go at the end of the first sentence if it stood by itself. Jack wrote about electricity for his science report, comma, and he did research. So letter A is correct. This one is the incorrect placing. We want letter A, putting it before the joining word and. And remember, other joining words would be but and or as well. They haven't done those here, but those could be used also. Lightning struck that tree on March 6th, 2008. Obviously, we want the comma between the two numbers. So we're going to go with letter B. So that's a pretty, pretty basic stuff. On the test, you're going to go through 10 sentences, and you're going to need to pick out of four choices, not just two, the one that has been punctuated correctly. So these two skills, these two comma skills are what they're going to be focusing on. So that's what you need to be looking for, and just look carefully at each one. Now, this is a review, but I think it's a good review and worth going over. A proper noun always begins with a capital letter. So days and months and holidays, historical periods, special events are proper nouns. This is a review. We have done this before. Also, book titles we haven't talked about quite as much. If you have a title of a book, you always capitalize the first word in the title and always the last word. The words in the middle are iffy. And this is where it can get tricky because the rule is supposed to be that important words in a book title get capitalized and unimportant words do not need to be. So there is where you might go, hmm, is that important or not? So we're going to practice this a little bit. So um, these are just some examples, days, months, holidays, and book titles. Let's give this a try. Let's find the proper nouns that need capitalizing and fix them up. All right, number one, the electricity was turned off on Friday. Friday being the day of the week that needs that capital F. I'm doing my best cursive, or at least cursive today. 
I read the book, The Haunted Mansion, with a flashlight. Now, I see a title. Now, titles also should be underlined. I'm not sure if you are aware of that. Um, oops, and the is part of the title, so I need to go back and catch that. Now, the needs a capital letter because it is the first word in the title. Haunted <clears throat> seems like a pretty important word as well. So even though it's in the middle of the title, I am capitalizing haunted, and then mansion is an important word, and it's also the last word in the title, so it automatically gets capitalized. And I'm going to go back and underline the book title, because book titles get underlined in sentences. The Haunted Mansion. We saved a lot of electricity in June. Oop, there is a month, June, with a capital J. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my book report on Michael Faraday is due after Columbus Day. They've already capitalized his name, which is correct. Columbus Day is a holiday, and we would need to capitalize that. So capital C on Columbus, as well as a capital D on Day. How are those cursive capitals coming along? I would rather learn about World War II than about electricity. Well... World War II was a historical event, period. We talk about it um, as something very specific, the name of a war, and so we would capitalize world and war two. Those are Roman numerals, actually. Instead of writing like the number two, you'll see World War I and World War II written like this. My sister wants to write a book called When the Lights Go Out. So we are at, we have a book title. Where does the book title start? The book is called When the Lights Go Out. This one's going to be our challenge. We know that the first word of the title needs capitalizing. So when. The is iffy. I would say lights is important and we know out. Go. Hmm. I'm going to leave the as a lowercase. When the Lights is a definite important word. What do you think about go? <laughs> My vote is out on that one. I think that's the hardest word on the page. When the lights, I'm going to put it in there. I could very easily open up my answer book and discover that they, they thought, the book thought that go was not important. Um, I think we'll live, we'll live if we capitalize go, but the would be like a joining word, and so we'll leave that one the way it is. All right, now, um, I do want to go over side 159 because it does have compound sentences, and I think that uh, just us practicing doing these um, is good for us. And I'm going to actually write them today because we've been skipping some writing and I think it would be good cursive practice for us. So I'm going to challenge you to write these with me. All right. The flashlight was bright. The lantern was brighter. We are going to use but because they are contrasting there. If you need to stop and take your time, that is perfectly okay with me. The flashlight was right, comma, but the lantern was brighter. They don't give much space there, do they? I use a lamp when I read magazines. I use a flashlight when I read Mysteries, another but again, because I'm using two different things. Um, I'll write this one out too. I don't know if I'll write all of them. I use a lamp when I read magazines, comma, but... I use a flashlight when I read mysteries. All right, for the sake of time, I won't write all of these out on video. Um, it would be good practice for you to try. Um, 
but I'm going to simply show you <laughs> the final three here so the video doesn't get too long. Josiah read that he can use a magnet to pick up pins. He is excited to see if it works. They tell us to use and. So what we would do here is we would put a comma after pins and we would put and there. This is hard to squeeze it in. Josiah read that he can use a magnet to pick up pins, comma, and, and then that would be a lowercase h. He is excited to see if it works. All right, that's a little tricky to read. I hope you can follow that. The photos and papers on our refrigerator are held up by magnets, and they would fall off without the magnets. All right, so get rid of the period, put a comma instead, get and in there, and then make that t lowercase is what we would need to do if we were rewriting that. And finally, it might be hard to find interesting magnets for your refrigerator, comma, but you could always make some. All right, you will probably see some of these tomorrow, so just take a look at where the comma is, where the joining word is, Think about those and be prepared. Now, the last side I told you I'm not going to go through. It says you can read the problem, read the solution, and then it says add details to elaborate. Elaborate means to give more detail, to tell more. If you would like to try this as an extra challenge to yourself, you are more than welcome to. It is a writing idea. You could work on the ideas with a, with a parent if, if you have the time for it today. So... Um, good luck with that if you choose to do it, and thanks for tuning in.